Welcome to everyone. Today we are going to talk about uh, how a CD-ROM works. In particular, we are going to see what is a CD-ROM, what is a CD drive, and how data are saved and read by our computers or CD players. First of all, what is a CD-ROM? If you like music, you have probably got dozens of compact disc or CD. A CD is nothing but a piece of plastic, but have you ever wondered how a piece of plastic can hold your favorite songs and actually create the sounds you hear? What is it about the plastic that stores the sound? You'll be amazed when you learn how they work. So uh, a CD is a four layer sandwich, a layer of plastic covered by a fine layer of aluminium, followed by a thin layer of acrylic, another type of plastic, and finally the label. Standard CDs have a diameter of 12 centimeters and can hold up to 80 minutes of song and the data are written on the reflective side of the CD. To store music on a CD, engineers first turn the music into a long string of numbers. We will talk about how this is done a little later. It turns out that it takes a lot of numbers to, to store a song. A CD holds two sets one set for each speaker of 44,000 numbers for each second of music that you hear. So it takes almost 6 million numbers to store a 3 minute song. Now, if we look the surface of the CD, it seems clean and smooth. But if we zoom in, we will notice that on the reflective layer of the CD, there are many pits and lands. That are these, these are the lands, and these are the pits. Written in a spiral shaped track. These, these uh, lands and, speed and pits can be seen by our CD drive, but first of all, what is a CD drive and how to it works? The CD drive has the job of finding and reading the, st the data stored as pits and lands on the CD. And considering uh, how small uh, the, these bumps are, the CD player is an exceptionally precise piece of e equipment. The drive consists of uh, three fundamental components, which are a drive motor that spins the disc, and it is uh, precisely controlled to rotate, to rotate between 200 and 500 rotation per minute, depending on which track is being read, a laser and a lens system to read the bumps, and finally, a tracking me mechanism that moves the laser assembly so that the laser's beam can follow the final track of the bumps, as it is shown in, the, in this picture. Now, the, the CD drive must understand what it is written on the CD surface, and here's what happens. First of all, uh, the laser focuses on the track of data bumps. Next, it shoots the laser beam through the clear layer so that it reflects off the aluminum layer. Finally, the reflected uh, light activates a special on-off switch called the optoelectronic switch. Light reflecting off the lens, the parts where are uh, no bumps, turns the switch on and the light reflects off the pits, scatters and leaves the switch off. So. So the data uh, read by the CD drive must be converted into signals which can be understood by the computer and sent to the speakers. But uh, that's not an easy task and, and let's try to understand it with uh, a simple example. Let's imagine, imagine that on the CD it is written the word hello. So the CD player reads the data and receives, uh, for example, the letter H, E, L, L and O as a sequence of 0 and 1s. In the same way, a long sequence of 0 and 1 represents a song and the computer sends to a special component called the amplifier that is able to understand these numbers and convert them into audio that will be played by the speakers. For today we have finished, thank you for your attention.